Hello guys, I'm Deeves here. This is the first part of my sped up stylized robot fireman modeling tutorial. In this part, I'll only cover the process of modeling. I start off by creating a hemisphere, applying an FFD modifier to it and pulling it together with some kind of a ring handle. I connect both sides of the handle with round circles to maintain general topology. Then I create sides of an improvised head, make them thick enough, apply several additional edge loops and also a slight noise modifier to give the metal a somewhat uneven shape. I chamfer its edges and break straight lines by slightly bending the head. I use the 4x4 FFD modifier to create the initial shape of the robot's head. In order to break the symmetry even more, Eyes get different extension and different amounts of side edges. I probe link eyes and ears to the rest of the head and use automated retopology tool to get proper topology. This method increases the speed of your modeling, yet makes you unable to use subgif later on. Also, I move some vertices manually with edge constraint function enabled. I create cavities around the ears, flattening them and chamfer their edges. This way we highlight some key elements of our model. I use the 2x2 FFD modifier to give the robot's head a proper slope. Remember to get rid of symmetry and straight lines when possible. Eyes are created with simple polygon modeling. Eyeballs themselves are created as separate hemispheres with their edge amounts equal to the amount of edges on their frames. Then they are inserted into the rest of geometry, attached to it and surrounded by decorative cavities, just like the robot's ears. One of key features of this fireman robot is the alternation of smooth edges and edges that only have a single chamfer. Each ear gets its own set of decorative elements. If you are applying similar or duplicated decorative elements to your model, make sure to break the symmetry by giving them some randomized rotation. I connect the head to the helmet by detaching overlapping elements, bullying them together, fixing their topology and attaching them back. I also embed eye hemispheres into their frames. The torso is created as a simple box. I add some extra edge loops to it to deform its sides slightly. Make sure you don't deform the frontal side though, because it will make it harder for you to get proper shading later on. I then embed several cylinders into the torso, detach their overlapping parts, probing everything together fix its topology and attach it back.
The topology is by no means ideal here, but since our frontal side of the torso is flat, it won't be noticeable on a finished model. In order to speed up this video a little bit, I've cut out some boring parts. You can always see the final topology on a Sketchfab link provided below. I detach the bottom part of the torso, give it some volume by adding the shell modifier, and attach it back. The crotch is created by probleming some cylinders together. If you aren't using a reference image, make sure to block things out first and see how they look together before you block most possibilities for editing by using the probleme tool. Be sure to make key elements of the robot thick enough to match the overall stylized look. I also use same decorative patterns on different elements of the robot, like balls on some side parts. There isn't much to comment on the knees section, because all I do here is some polygon modeling. I use the Probolin tool to embed a cylinder into the knee. Its middle will also serve as a rotation point for the leg below. I also create a cavity for the upper part of the leg. This part is made of two slightly bent cylinders. There is nothing really special about it. Just like before, I detach all intersecting parts, probolin them together, fix their topology and attach them back. The boot doesn't have any decorative parts and is made really simple, so it matches the overall stylized look of the model. We use the probolin tool again to connect its parts. Make sure to increase the thickness of all elements when possible. Shoulders are made from two intersecting spheres by using the awesome combination of Probolin tool and automated re topology. When working on the lower part, make sure to switch your coordinate system to local. I recreate same decorative elements here that were used when working on robot's legs. The process of creation of each robot's part is pretty much the same. We start with blockout, probably in everything together, apply automated re topology, and add some decorative elements. Obviously, we don't need automated re topology to attach elements to flat surfaces. I used the shell modifier to give this nozzle some volume. Make sure to make it thick enough to maintain a slightly cartoony look, and also cut down some of its topology on its inner part in order to reduce the overall poly count. A joint connector is made of a hemisphere that is embedded into the top part of the hand model. An arm is grown from a sphere and then embedded into the shoulder by using the object paint tool. Then it is rotated by 180 degrees in local coordinate system. Its simple pattern is made by combining extrude and chamfer tools. A similar decorative pattern is recreated on a fire extinguisher model. The valve is created from several cylinders that are merged together by using the Probolin tool. We we'll also cut their smaller copies out of each of them. Remember to place one cylinder in the middle. I use snapping tool and then fix angles manually. The proper angle between cylinders is 72 degrees.
Just like before, I chamfer all hard edges here and then embed the middle element. You don't have to be precise here, as this thing isn't supposed to rotate. I rotate the fire extinguisher slightly to break the straight line again and to give our robot a slightly clumsy look. The neck is created from bent pipes, the same way we used to create legs. I also create a cavity in the robot's torso. Then I just merge everything together. Thanks for watching, guys! If you got any value from this video, be my guest and subscribe to my channel for more stylized content. And most importantly, have a great day!